share to group. Let's see. I'm going to share this in my Mind Body Musings podcast group. And that's it. <clears throat> oh, happy, happy Sunday. This is day four of my 50 days of Facebook Live. And I missed yesterday because um, scrambling all day long here, there, everywhere, and then completely present with my good girlfriend. Um, and then I got home at 10 p.m. and did not make it to do it, and that's okay. So, um, part of doing this 50 day of Facebook Live thing is one, it's encouragement for me to begin doing things live since the recorded area is my powerhouse. Um, and the second thing is for me to create content out of anything that happens in a given day, like where I'm at right now in my life, rather than planning something out. Okay, here are the different ways that I can approach this topic and provide insight to it and like months down the line then use something as an example for teaching. Um, and today was one of those days where I'm realizing, wow, I'm in the middle of a teaching moment. I'm in the middle of something I can create uh, content around. And so this thing happened about an hour ago and now I am, I'm home and I'm also really exhausted. Um, so it might not come out the most crisp crystal clear teaching I've ever done in my life but that's okay because now you get to hear my accents and that's really why we're here isn't it so you can hear me more from one accent to another accent and now we are in my German accent okay um so yesterday I posted on Facebook uh, a poster of a movie love and saucers and I was like y'all ah, I'm interviewing this guy from Love and Saucers tomorrow. It's happening tomorrow. And it's gonna be so great. I can't wait. What do you wanna know? <sighs> so I had been envisioning interviewing this man, Dave Huggins, from the documentary Love and Saucers for about eight months now. I have been so excited to interview this man. He's 73 years old, and the only way I could get into contact with him was actually calling his phone number, his home phone, no cell phone, no email. I got in touch with him by emailing the director of the film who put me in touch with him by giving me his number and just saying, call him once a day, hopefully one of the times he'll pick up. Called him, called him, called him, he picked up and uh, it was like a two minute phone call and I just said, hi, uh, the director of the film, Brad, had told you I'd be calling, and uh, he said that you were down to do an interview with me, and I'm so excited, so let's schedule it. And we scheduled it for today, whatever day today is, October 8th, or no, 6th, at noon, in New Jersey. And so last night, I ended up going to bed pretty early. I'd been, I've been watching the documentary again all week in pieces for like the second and third time, really diving deep into this man's story. As a summary, this man, um, he lost his virginity to aliens and he paints as a way to uh, therapeutically heal the trauma he did experience and it being weird, like just living in a society where you have relationships with aliens and you see them every day. Like it's probably pretty challenging to fit into this modern world and have that be your your life. And so I've just been really excited to interview him and get inside of his world and also see his paintings in his home and his studio and kind of just like go through them and do a Facebook Live with y'all and show you. So last night I went to bed early, I like fell asleep watching this movie. Like I feel like a five-year-old again, thinking about him and interviewing him. Like I'm a 10-year-old 10, 10 the night before Christmas. And so last night uh, I went to bed and this morning I got up early and I made my coffee and I planned and I scheduled everything. I got my, my like transportation down pat. Okay, I'm gonna walk 20 minutes. I'm gonna get on the subway. I'm gonna ride five stops. I'm gonna transfer from that subway to another step, subway, five more stops. Then I'm gonna walk 10 more minutes, I'm gonna buy a bus ticket, and then I'm gonna take the bus 
from New York to New Jersey. And then I'll get off on this stop, even though I have no idea which stop this is. And then I'm gonna walk another 10 minutes and then I'll be there. It's like an epic poem to get from where I live in Brooklyn to where he lives in New Jersey. It's just, whoosh. but I did it. Cause like, I'm super excited. So I've got my, all my equipment with me, this super heavy backpack, my computer and my headphones and like all the plugs, and cords and everything. And y'all, I get there, knock on his door and uh, he opens it and he has no idea who I am. No idea why I'm there. No idea about anything. Like just completely confused why there is this like girl with a backpack on being like, are you ready for our interview? Because that's definitely what I sounded like. I was like, are you ready? It's, it's time for you to welcome me inside for us to interview each other. Um, and so yeah, he, he wasn't feeling well and he said no. And then he just started kind of, kind of like shutting the door. He's like, no, I don't feel very good today. So I just had in that moment to, I was in my very similar freeze response of just like, you know, it's, what, where, where am I? Like, well, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Cause I was so, and what's really interesting is last night I, I had this voice that said, call him again and remind him like, we don't have Google, we didn't have a Google calendar set up. He doesn't have email. You know, we don't, we didn't text about it again. He doesn't have that. And it felt like I really needed to follow up with him, but I didn't. And I probably should have, and I didn't. I ignored that intuition. And I arrived there, said no. He said, um, we can schedule it for another day. And in that moment, I just, I was like, I, okay, I, we'll schedule it for another day. I'll, I'll call you at another time and we'll figure it out. And so then he closes the door and then I just kind of stand there. And then I, I just start audio chatting my friend and I'm like, this is really sad. I don't, don't know what to do. Um, eventually I had to find that bus again and then I will save you the long story, but it took me another hour and a half to get back home. So I spent probably about three to four hours in transportation today. <sighs> and on the way home, I had a call with my friend, Jamie, Jamie Woolrab, who um, I'm hosting a, a workshop, a, a retreat with actually called the Embodied Archetype. I'm not going into that right now. I'm just sharing how I know. He's a, he's an actor, a director, a producer, really amazing, wonderful man that does vocal work. And we had a call to talk about some of the details with our event coming up and strategizing a few of the things that we need to talk about before it. And I told him what had just happened. And he, he said to me um, that in the Kabbalah, there is this perspective and belief that any energy you put into something literally cannot be wasted. And I already knew that part. I was like, I know it, it, you know, karma's great. It'll come back in some way or, um, some good thing comes out of this. And I'm very much still, I'm like, even in this moment, I'm very much still like, huh, uh, you know, but I'm still moving through it. But he had continued to talk about how it's not just that nothing is a waste of energy or waste of time, something good will come out of it. It's actually, what he was saying is that in the Kabbalah, there is this future tense, future, in the future, something very concrete will be rewarded to you because of that energy exchange, which is different. It's different from, oh, well, something good will come out of this. It's different because this one is more around the, 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 the belief that there is still something coming and it's directly correlated to that meticulousness and goodwill that you put into doing that thing. Like the universe says, wow, you really, really did care about that. And though we're not giving you the reward you thought you would be getting a really amazing, sweet interview, it'll be something else and it's going to blow your mind and it's coming. So it's coming in the future because of what you just did. And I thought that was a really beautiful thing. And I've had other experiences that have happened recently where I've been a little bit um, bummed and sad. They didn't work out according to the way I thought that they would work out. I've had a few experiences like this in my life, whether it's um, more recently for me, it was uh, going into the Facebook 
add funnel. Um, never really has worked for me and this time I was thinking it's really gonna work for me and I threw money at it and it just was a total flop. And I am also centering myself in that reminder that it's always some sort of sunk cost and we're always learning what is expanding us and going to fulfill us in our business or dreams or relationship and partnership or it's showing directions that we no longer have to spend any time thinking about. Like for me, I know, like, I know this is different from the experience today, but when it comes to Facebook ads, I feel really grounded and centered with the fact that this is not the path for me, especially as a projector in human design. That's for another Facebook video. But being a projector in human design, I do not work the same way generators do. And so therefore that does not really work for me. Like doing the Facebook marketing probably kind of repels people is what I've seen. Like even the comments on the, the very not super controversial videos that I did were pretty dismissive and dare I say quite rude. And that doesn't feel good for my soul. And so I feel really, because I did the extra mile, I feel really centered and grounded in, oh, that's not gonna work for me. And oftentimes this is what happens in relationships too. We go into relationships and then if we start to get into that space where we don't know if the relationship is serving us, there is a very tender spot at that time when people people may leave because they're just done and they will always wonder what if they stayed and then there's the other way where you stay and you do the work and you do the work and you show up and you give a hundred percent of what it is that you wanted from the other person for a container so a set amount of time maybe it's like for the next 30 days, I'm gonna give 110% of unconditional love, what, what it is that I desire from them, and revealing my heart, and not withholding, and I'm just gonna give it my all, because that's what I want from them for, th for 30 days or 60 days, I'm just gonna give that. And I think that period is really important because if you head on out too soon or quickly, you don't have that groundedness of knowing truly, oh, this relationship isn't for me. Sometimes it takes us going deeper, 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 and actually holding on to something in order for the split and the separation to feel really complete. Sometimes you have to go under like the baseline is like this really medium healthy spot maybe, and sometimes you have to go really deep underneath it to feel incredibly grounded in the truth that this doesn't work for me anymore. And if you don't go incredibly deep into the roots and to the earth and to the core of what it is you want or the core of the problem or the issue, and you just head on out really quickly when you notice those signs you don't like, then I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it could be for the rest of your life that a portion of your brain is wondering about that. A portion of your brain wonders if maybe Facebook ads would have always fulfilled that thing in my business that I was wondering if it would. Or maybe that relationship actually would have provided for me that texture of love that I'm craving deeply if I had just gone the extra mile. Or maybe that dream would have panned out if I just went above and beyond. This isn't always the case and we're separating abusive relationships out of this. This is not what I'm talking about of like, if you're in an abusive situation, go above and beyond and stay in it and go deeper. That is not what we are talking about, making that very clear. But we're talking about things in life where oftentimes we pull out because we'd rather pull out and be safe than sorry than truly know. And with today's example, um, I don't really know so I'm in a spot right now where I'm still willing and down to do that interview again and go and yeah, I don't feel like right now if I ne said never mind, I'd be pulling out too soon. And then I'd always wonder how awesome would have that, that interview have, have been. So I'm still willing to do it and I still would like to do it. I just have a better idea of how to go about it. And always remembering that the energy you invest in something, whether it's a relationship or a dream or a goal, is always showing you what it is that you want or what it is that you do not want. And the deeper you go into both, the deeper you find and discover your truth. 
the deeper you know it really isn't for me or the deeper you know I'm feeling effing high on this and I love it and even if it's hard I want to keep going because it's worth it to me so I'm all about depth I'm all about depth one of my teachers John Wineland says uh, on his website and this is originally what had me hooked into him such a great tagline but when you go on his website and a little ad pops up to put in the email he says fuck hacking go deep totally resonated with me and it's stuck with me since I'm the same exact way I don't want to hack my way to get somewhere I don't want to hack my way into love I don't want to hack my way into my dreams I don't even want to hack my way into getting to Dave Huggins in New Jersey I would rather put in the work deeply to a very depthful extent to know for me to really truly know if this was a yes or this was a no and the deeper you go the more revealing and flashing those signs are right anybody can go half into something anybody can say I want this if it doesn't come my way then bye like that's why online dating can be so challenging is because most of us are just half into it it's so easy we don't have to really go out of our way to do it and that's why a lot of times it doesn't really truly go anywhere deep because it doesn't require depth in order to do it but dreams like one of my current dreams becoming an actor takes a lot of depth and it takes a lot of grit and it takes a lot of endurance and continuously going and going and going and putting yourself forward whereas if it's something that you're really not feeling uh, it's easy to have one toe in so this isn't what I do for everything in my life. I'm very clear on there are some things that I deeply say yes to, some things I deeply say no to, some things I just say yes or no to. But going all the way back to the, the original point of this video is I really found that Kabbalah um, sharing to be very beautiful. If you're just now joining, the Kabbalah sharing is that literally nothing that you extend energy on is a waste of time. And it's not just that you learn something in that moment, but it's that you will be rewarded in the future for that. There's something good coming your way because of this, because of the meticulousness and the dedication and the caring and the energy and the love that you put into it. Something is coming forward. Something forward is coming your way. That's all I'll share today. It's Sunday. I'm going to go uh, wait for my online groceries to arrive and watch The Politician because I just started it and I'm really excited to watch it. Um, thank you all for watching this. I hope it's served. Keep your eye out for Dave Huggins' interview whenever it may happen because it will happen. Mm, just like watching this video. Thank you, Patrick. It's so nice to see people hop on here. Okay, I'll see you later. See you tomorrow for Dave